Okay, and here we go. Next up, 66 Chevy Modified Stocker from AMT in uh, 125th scale. So, let's take a look. All right, here's the plastic. Now, as you can see, um, pretty straightforward kit. Nothing uh, too complicated here. Just a couple of sprues. Uh, you know, certainly a step down from the uh, VW bus I, I just did, the 116 uh, Ravel Samba bus. But um, you may have noticed if you watched a, a few of my videos, I like to go back and forth and do something a little up here and, you know, then maybe do something a little bit simpler. Um, these kits are still a whole lot of fun because, you know, there's, there's nothing complicated and it, it's just tinkering around with them and, uh, you know, a pretty straightforward thing. So, should be cool. So, just to start and look through quickly, we have some very basic, uh, you know, classic AMT fold-out instructions, engine, wheels, chassis, interior, roll cage body, as you can see. Uh, not a whole lot of parts, so, and then the, uh, final dress up and some decals. All right, so let's look at what we got here. We've got some Carome, uh, you know, just front, back, simple stuff. Uh, valve heads, looks like we have a, uh, choice here between two different kinds. We have some headers, so that looks pretty good. Uh, Notice here, we have the uh, flash bug came to town, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's mostly on the sprue. It's really not on the pieces. Uh, the pieces themselves look clean. Um, you know, when you when you hear people talk about flash, whether it's me or, or people in other you know, the build videos, you know, it's it's uh, flash is never a tragedy. It's just you know and. Saying that, you, you may wonder, then, what's the point of, uh, you know, making an issue, pointing it out? Well, the reason I point it out is it is a little something extra to do, you know, in terms of cleaning up your pieces. There's always a cleanup step before, you know, actually washing and painting and assembling and everything else. Um, you know, and you really don't talk about it much because it's kind of a uh, dry and boring thing to talk about. <laughs> for, uh, you know, any other kind of way to describe it. But, you know, you should always be in the habit when you build a, or before you build a kit, before you paint, before you do anything, is, you know, take a real good look at your sprues, check your parts, make sure there are no uh, mold misalignments that you need to clean up, flash, obviously, um, you know, big injector pin, flash hanging off parts, you know, like down here, especially where you need to join things, like this is the uh, differential back here. You, know, you want to make sure there's not flash rising up above the parts. So you can see here against my fingernail, a little piece. Stuff like that you'll need to clean up, you know, so that the kit actually goes together well. Um, so that's, you know, it's it's a pretty, uh, you know, rote step to do. And a little work with the old knife and if necessary... You can go dental and get the scraper out, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's easy cleanup stuff. We have some, uh, roll cage pieces and some of the crash bars, uh, to go on the side of the kit. So I'm going to get back to the bots in a moment, uh, when I get to the end of this, uh, opening piece to talk about handling the kit or an approach to the kit. We have some of those metal side guards for the body. Uh, dashboard. You know, there's not going to be really much interior on this kit because it is meant to be a racer, you know, stripped down inside. So we just get the one seat, uh, extra header pieces, nice big slab hood. You know, it's got a decent underbody texture on it. Uh, really, the highlight on this kit in terms of detail will be the engine itself, which is something I'm going to bring up in a moment. Uh, when we look at the uh, main body pieces, uh, you do get a nice firewall. Lots of little detail on there to play around with. So, interior, you know, it's just one of these simple tub treatments. Uh, you can see the sheen on it. So, uh, you know, lots of residue from the mold. So definitely have to clean up. And you can see here some of what I was talking about 
see like flash like this that's sticking out that stuff needs to go before you paint but you can see on the inside walls of the body pan you know there's just some rivet marks because in you know real life a car like this would have had all the uh interior comforts stripped out and chucked aside for you know weight fire hazard whatever really the only thing that's molded in there are the locators for the seat and the pedals so that's a simple thing to approach we have a separate frame i always like the separate frame here again we have our flash bug now my only uh gripe with this would be where the engine's going to sit you know we have some nice engine detail but then we have just this open channel here with a metal shaft that's going to go through for the front wheels so um, real simple way to deal with that I'm probably just going to cut some sheet styrene you know make a plate cover that up paint the black you know uh, painting things black is especially flat black is the uh, black hole of detail or lack thereof to uh, clean stuff up and make it look better but otherwise you know this looks good enough here and then we have the body with those nice hogged out wheel wells and a uh, pretty sleek looking machine there. So with the hood on there, that'll look pretty good. But now let's get to the fun stuff because this is kind of a, a, a kooky machine. So getting back to the box art, now you, you'll see from the cover here, we have these giant tires sticking out. We have all the bumper guards, uh, the, the crash guards the uh, extra metal cladding to protect the body. So this almost has like, a, you know, like a, like a death race <laughs> type uh, vibe to it. You know, these uh, kind of racing cars, you can see some of the extras they talk about here uh, on the box. And they have a couple of other uh, models in this uh, type of lineup, aesthetic, whatever you want to call it. So uh, what caught my eye with this kit is in fact that uh, purple color. Purple happens to be uh, my wife's favorite color, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to do one for her because um, she certainly uh, enjoys watching me working here at my table and, uh, you know, creating my stuff. And, uh, you know, that's part of my personality. And, you know, I uh, always say when you get into any kind of creative pursuit, whether it's this hobby, woodworking, writing, which all happen to be uh, hobbies I have. <laughs> but uh, whenever you want to do something creative in your in your life, photography, anything like that, it's uh, really important to have a partner who understands that that's part of you and supports your pursuit of that. So, uh, yeah, this one's going out to my wife, so thumbs up to her. And um, that's my lecture for this segment. Back to the details. So... Here are some of these crazy tires that come with this. And you can see these things are just going to stick out and it's going to be pretty neat. And to dress up the vehicle a little bit, I'm going to use some of the old radiator hose. Here are the metal shafts for the wheels. Instead of, uh, you probably noticed, there are no clear parts with this. They give you this little piece. I'm not sure if that's like sand in there or not. But it has the preprint of the uh, safety grate, and that will pop in just like so. So that should be a cool look when it's done. That's a nice little detail. Got some purple ignition wire to match what's going to be the purple of the body. And, hey, why not? Let's throw in some seatbelts. Okay. Comes with a nice decal set. I uh, get a number of different number treatments, and depending... How, uh, actually, let me take these out of here so I don't get the glare on it. Uh, depending how, uh, you know, wacky you want to do your own build, uh, you know, you can go with more like traditional numbers, like these two sets. Uh, these, actually, if you get a close look at that, uh, that's pretty neat because it's made to look like duct tape. Like somebody just duct taped two numbers on the side of the car, which is kind of cool. And then you have, uh, you know, someone just went... Uh, you know, graffiti style with some spray paint. So, and we have some endorsement stickers, uh, some stripes, uh, you know, good stuff. But I also picked up some lettering. Now, 
obviously you can see the red and black, but on the bottom, it's all white letters and numbers, and I think that's coming through perhaps faintly, but you can make those out. And I'm going to use those to put a little message on this back trunk lid, and you'll just have to stick around to the end to see what that is. <laughs> the suspense. Okay, so that's what uh, comes with this kit. And as I said, you can see it's a pretty simple, straightforward build. So I'm going to get cracking. I'm uh, going to do some cleanup, uh, get the uh, mold residue off, get it to spray paint. And when I come back, as usual, there will be color. Okay, until then. Okay, so I thought I'd hop in here for a moment. Now, I had talked in the introductory segment about Flash and having to do some cleanup, and, you know, it's uh, not a very exciting thing to watch, <laughs> and I don't even really know if it, you can effectively capture it on camera, but I just wanted to show you, um, I did my cleanup, and, you know, this this is all the stuff you need to uh, get off your your parts. Now, to that I will add older kits, older toolings, and I'll talk about that in a moment. You will have more of this than on newer kits with newer toolings. Now, what is this thing about tooling? Uh, you'll probably hear this in some other uh, build videos where people talk, they get excited because they're talking about, oh, it's it's a reissue with, with new tooling or whatever. You know, it, it's about taking care of the molds that the parts are uh, created in for the for the kit. As molds age, they tend to, uh, you know, the, the, the meeting lines of the mold tend to get a little sloppy, and then plastic can get in there. Then you start to get flash. Uh, newer tooling methods also can create more detailed parts. Obviously, the more accurate the molding of your part, then the better fit of the parts, plus extra detail you can get. Now, uh, I'm not saying any of this as a criticism of this kit, and I have the body here because as I was doing the cleanup, oh, see that? Missed the spot. As I was doing the cleanup on the body, I took a look in there at the ID stamp, and I think you can see it there. This is from 1966, this kit. So, getting a little up there in age. Uh, it's not often I open a box and find that the kit uh, had its origins before my origin. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, this, this is, you know, part of what you, you have to deal with to uh, clean up one of these older kits. Now, there's nothing wrong with the kit. You know, it's perfectly good to build, but you just have to be aware of that little extra step. Now, most of this cleanup comes on parts that should be round, but end up having a, what's called a, a parting line or a mold misalignment, you know, on the edge where when you look at it, instead of it being smooth like this, there's a little step. And that's because when the molds came together, they weren't quite exactly lined up the way they should be. And there was probably also a little gap there that plastic could seep into. Not so much to end up with flash, but to end up with a little ridge on the piece. And, you know, the reason I'm talking about this after I did it is uh, it's very hard to see on camera. Now, as a comparison to show you some of the difference between new tooling versus old tooling. I'll dig out this sprue here. Now we'll take a look at this one. So we have our hood, our battery, 
hood hinges, uh, extensions for the exhaust from the uh, headers. And you can see, you know, they, they look pretty good, uh, you know. But what I want to point out, when you look at the battery, and I had purposely didn't do all the cleanup on this, you notice that some of the, the edges are not, you know, quite clear as a straight line as they should be. Uh, same with the hood hinges, you know, on a new tooling, this is obviously from a, a different kit. Now you can see when you get down into these smaller parts, like these drive shafts here, you know, all the fine little detail, the, the coil on the, the spring here, you know, it's, it's super sharp, it's super crisp, and also you're not seeing the flash. So just something to point out. Again, you know, it took me, I sat down and I don't know, I guess I maybe spent 45 minutes, maybe an hour uh, to clean up the parts to my satisfaction. And that, <laughs> that's the best that I had. Now, uh, some people, you, you can really go crazy with this. Uh, a common trick that people do is they'll take a black marker, like a Sharpie, and particularly on the body, they will draw the Sharpie along the parting lines and then start to sand and sand until the Sharpie goes away, which means the rays in the plastic, the um, parting line, is then gone. Um, you know, they can go and do that. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> Uh, but it's all how uh, obsessive, compulsive, perfectionist, you whatever you want to describe it, that you, you choose to be with your kit. So, uh, yeah, you know, just thought I'd point it out a little more specifically this time because I always talk about it. And I know in, if you watch other build videos, sometimes they won't even mention this step. They might just say, I'm going to clean up my parts and that will probably mean this. It will mean, uh, you know, actually washing to get the um, mold residue off. But I just thought I would talk about that. And of course, the perfect tool for this is your X-Acto knife. You can just scrape along the edge. For larger imperfections, we have our wide scraper. <clears throat> and if you really want to go, you know, again really far with it you can get uh, some fine grit sandpaper and and sand it down filing sticks you know whatever uh, whatever works for you so now <laughs> I will get to painting and when I come back as always there will be color all right be back <laughs> Okay, and here we go, back to the build, and color. All right, so let's look at what's been happening with the painting. Now, I want to talk about this because with this kit, as I said in the first part, um, you know, the original 
Uh, molds for this kit were created a quite a while ago, 51 years at this point, and it does show <laughs> in um, some of the ways that the kit goes together, which I'll talk about as I go through this. Now, you'll notice right off the bat that some things, like the seat, uh, the underside of the front uh, lower clip here are not painted yet. Uh, the engine is just in rough coat here for the yellow because I'll do a, a second coat once I glue it together. But uh, some of these things I have not painted for certain reasons and some of these things are not in final coat for other reasons. So allow me to explain. So the seat uh, I didn't do yet because I have to uh, scrape off the moldings for the uh, belts since I am going to be adding belts to the seat with the uh, belt kit that I used on the um, Valiant Scamp build. If you remember, oops, if you remember this guy and the seat belts I put in there. And I'll show again in this one with a JPEG or two how to go about doing that. Not very difficult at all. Um, the lower clip for the body, I obviously sprayed this in purple, but I don't have this painted because it's not really clear how much of that is going to be visible, if at all, once things go together. So I'll test fit that and then see later on. Uh, I suspect that uh, part of that will be visible and part of that will be a gluing area and I'd rather not have to scrape off all that paint. I'd rather size it up and then uh, attach it at that point. Uh, the engine, as I said, is, is just in rough coat. Once I glue that together, then I will do final coat. Now, this wasn't as appreciative, appreciable before paint, but you see here, there's this big channel on either side of the engine. That is where the shaft is going to sit for the front wheels. And remember, this kit uses a metal shaft to hold the wheels. So uh, that is there. That's going to have to stay there for the front wheels. Uh, we have fire engine, uh, fire engine, <laughs> firewall detail. This was actually a really nice piece and, uh, you know, brought out the wiring with a handy black marker. Very easy way to do wiring detail. And then just some detail paint to sharpen that up a bit. But... Uh, you know, this this piece, as nice as it was done, kind of highlights what you run into with, with some of these kits that, you know, have been around for uh, quite a while, uh, sometimes longer than the people building them, <laughs> is, is that it's not always consistent, the uh, level of detail you're, you're getting in these pieces, and sometimes it can be a, a bit of a mixed bag, and... You know, it, it's just something to, to work with. It's a little odd sometimes when you see a piece like this where clearly the effort was made and there's a lot to work with and you can really, you know, make that look nice and, and sharp. And let's say um, this this front oops, this front body clip piece, which aside from the exterior part, you know, it doesn't really have a whole lot of detail to it. And even after wonder, like, would this have worked better, say, as a two or three piece assembly with the, the clip, the radiator, you know, um, those things I, I don't really think about too much when I'm building because, again, seeing that this is everything in the kit, you know, it's not a complicated assembly. So, um, you know, something like that versus something like that, whatever it is, what it is. Um, the only place where it, it kind of, got to me a little bit was with the uh, chassis detail, which I'll talk about shortly. But just to finish talking about the painting, so you can see, uh, and from the JPEGs, the purple for the body, the red. Now, 
you notice in the JPEGs, and you can probably notice it here a little bit, uh, in some places I have mixed, oh, actually I separated them already, <laughs> but uh, some of the, the sprues, probably in the JPEGs you saw, I had mixed colors of spray paint, and, you know, that was as simple as holding a piece of cardboard over one part of the sprue and spraying the other color. Uh, why do that rather than just clip the sprue and, and remove all the parts? Well, you know, the sprue is a real handy way to hold parts as you're spraying, uh, clip them if you need to, whatever, and then, you know, I can just cut the piece off, off later. Um, either way you do it, you're still going to have to clip the piece off at some point and do a, a small touch-up. So, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other, whatever. I just prefer to do it that way. I just find it simpler. So, you know, I like simple, simple solutions are uh, real handy because it doesn't leave much space for things to go wrong. <laughs> okay, so uh, getting back to the pieces here, we have our roll bar. Now, I left the, the black that I sprayed. There's only one coat of red on it. That, like the engine, once I assemble it, I'll do the second coat of red to sharpen that up. We have our little battery here, which fell off the parts tree, but, uh, you know, painted nonetheless. I haven't done anything with the hood hinges because, one, I don't know if I'm going to use them. They do glue to the bottom of the hood and then pinch under the uh, firewall and the body for the hood to actually open on the hinges. I may leave them out and just have the hood and, you know, have, uh, you know, take it off if I want to show the engine because then you'll be really able to see it in uh, better light. Wheels sprayed one metallic tone versus the shinier metallic tone for the body cladding. I'm not going to build this all beat up. You know, I don't really like to do that. So uh, I will be leaving these as they are. Uh, the wheels, I just did a little bit of black wash in there to give a little detail on the shadow and then that will sit in these awesome giant tires uh, I did the shocks you know normally I do shocks or spring detail in yellow but since I'm trying yellow for an engine color I figure I would do those in uh, I believe this color is called tangerine <laughs> yes indeed Gloss Tangerine, whatever. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted a nice offsetting color underneath. So, speaking of underneath, let's take a look at this chassis. Now, you know, this is uh, a little bit of a compromise the way that they did this. You know, normally you either get a whole uh, lower body pan with the frame molded in as, as one big assembly, or you get a floor pan and then the frame as a separate piece, and you glue them together. With this kit, they did a little bit of the uh, floor pan, which was the, the front fenders, and then half of the rear, and then the actual interior tub forms the rest of that. Then we'll go in, which is a little bit different. But what I did, I went, and since I'm leaving the bottom primer gray, Figuring, you know, when they turned this into this stock car, they just primed whatever was exposed, and uh, that was it. So I painted the frame a semi-gloss black to offset that. Now, in the back here, with it painted, it actually looks like this was an assembly that was put together. And it's not... What's weird with this, you have this pretty nice frame detail where there's no body pan. But where it meets this rear body pan, it just kind of stops, and there's no definition. So what I did, again, nice simple solution, I just took my brush, and with a little paint, I just free painted that arch in there, and now it looks like that that's a frame with the fender on top, when really it's just, you know, optical, optical effect by using the, the freehand paint. Do the arches match on either side? Well, of course not. I just freehanded them, but you can't look at both sides at once, so you're not going to notice, especially with the wheel and, and tire sitting in there once it's done. Um, up front, 
this is where I have a little bit of a, a beef with the way, uh, you know, this, this kit's approach. You know, all of this, uh, front suspension detail, the, the control rods, you know, all, all this stuff in here, this really, you know, as separate pieces, this would build up, uh, you know, nicely. But here it's, it's just all molded in one big hunk. And what I did, I, I did it all in the semi-gloss black. And then I went in with a uh, steel color to highlight the rods and then some metallic silver for the bolts on the lower suspension arms just to try to give it something to show some detail there. Otherwise, you know, it's just a big chunk of whatever. Uh, top side, so this would be the engine bay now looking in there. Again, where, where it's weird because down here it's kind of... Uh, you know, very simplistic the way it was done, but yet they have these nice wiring details molded into the fenders. So, um, you know, again, not, not to, to beat a point to death, but, you know, when, when you build some of these older kits, you just, what, what's there is there, I and mean, what isn't there isn't, and, you know, you try to work with it and harmonize it as best you can. Um, you know, again, I use the black marker to bring that out, just a little detail painting, and, um, you know, when it's all done, that, that should look pretty nice in there. So, we shall see. <laughs> of course, I'm going to wire the engine and whatnot so that that will add some more detail in there. But that is all coming along well. For the grill cover, that was just sprayed the uh, bright metal color. And then I black washed it. So, you get a little bit of the grill effect. And still get the shadow. So, that should look nice when it's mounted into the chrome. The chrome, you know, typically I, I dull this down with some dull coat. Haven't decided yet because um, I'm working with some colors I haven't worked before with, like the purple and, and whatnot, and certainly um, this combination of colors. I want to see how that looks. If it starts to look a little uh, garish, <laughs> then, then I'll tone it down with the dull coat. So I'm just going to leave the chrome over there for now. Now, one thing I did here, which I have not tried before, you know, I, I see on other, uh, some of these other build videos, everybody talks about these Molotow, uh, Molotow? Yeah, uh, liquid uh, chrome pens. And uh, for doing molding and whatnot on car bodies. So I figured, you know, for a couple of bucks for the marker, let me give it a shot. So you can see... It's on there, and I got to tell you, I, I'm liking it. <laughs> uh, one, it was a whole lot easier to do it with the marker. It has a nice uh, felt tip, but it doesn't make puddles as you go with it. It's, it's a pretty precise application, although it can't get into little corners. So there I did go with brush and some uh, silver to touch that up. But otherwise, you know, in a couple of minutes... I had all the window trim done, and it does dry. It is a permanent marker. It it does dry with a very nice, almost, uh, you know, reflective chrome finish. So, that is nice. Otherwise, on the body, the only thing I did was a black wash on the uh, vent here, and around the door seams and the trunk lid. Now... Uh, there really is nothing else that will go on this body detail-wise in terms of painting because, uh, you know, considering that it's a stock uh, racer, it, it's been stripped down so they don't have door handles. In fact, this is why you get these patch plates. Uh, they would actually, you know, with cars like this, the, the doors are sealed and then these latch plates welded over to make sure they don't open up during the race. Uh, kind of butch, but that's the style of uh, modification for these cars and you know it, it looks uh looks pretty neat when it's done so the interior tub you know nothing much going on here again because it would have been all stripped out for uh saving weight and probably for fire safety as i said before so i just added a little something you know the, the mold the pedals were molded in so i painted that detail and then I just did some metallic silver on all the uh, rivets that would have been in there to hold everything together. So, 
that's where it's at right now. So I'm going to start building. I'll have the JPEGs for that as I move along. And uh, we'll see how it starts to shape up. So, so far so good. And back to work. All right. Okay, and here we go with major assembly. All right, um, you know, first off, not that there's a whole lot to assemble here. Uh, and I don't mean to beat on that point, but just, you know, to stress that, um, you know, at, I believe, 70 odd parts in this kit, you know, you're going to go through a, a relatively uh, quick building phase, particularly if you don't, you know, wanting into like detailed painting or whatnot, or, you know, picking out like, you know, fine details on the, the firewall or something like that. If you just want to go straight in and build, uh, and maybe just do some simple spraying, you, you could easily, uh, do a kit like this in a weekend. So, you know, that there's, there's a real plus in that. So, you know, uh, kits that have huge parts, part counts, <laughs> I managed to get that out. Kits that have huge part counts, you know, certainly there's an appeal there because there's the super detail and, you know, the, these very uh, intricate building processes. But, you know, that's not always uh, what may be the flavor of the day when you want to build. So if you want to do something simpler and faster, you know, these kinds of kits are great. Uh, the only caveat to that... <laughs> Uh, the only the only thing I would I would say to that is you know you, you do have to keep in mind with these simpler kits you know you, there's going to be some gaps and some empty spots and some you know spaces that don't have a whole lot going on because you're only dealing with you know seventy odd parts and particularly with a kit like this where you know that the molds were done uh, way back in 1966 with uh, you know. <laughs> black and white TVs and, and five channels to watch. Uh, you know, there's, there's a very, very different uh, situation in terms of, you know, what they were able to do with the molds and, you know, how well pieces size up and fit together. So, uh, you know, when you do a kit like this, it is sort of going back in the uh, hobby time capsule to a different time. And you get to, in a way, appreciate the difference between building kits as they were and let's say kits as they are now with the modern tooling and the super precise detail and the exacting fit of the parts so uh, in terms of building your hobby skill 
kits like this are great because you you can build them you know very simple and straight and, and have them all done but if you want to start to tinker with them a little bit you really start to get a feel of how you can work pieces and and you know locating things and and whatnot that easily translate to uh, not only more intricate kits but if you want to start doing some modifications or even like a whole on kit bash uh, you know you'll you'll learn those skills and have them in place so that's today's lecture <laughs> now one thing i wanted to talk about um i had hinted earlier on that there was a little issue with the hood and uh you know this is uh goes in the uh pros and cons category of you know how you you do your work I've said several times, and like with this, I, I mentioned that I did my spray painting in my garage, and uh, because it was a nice warm day, I had the garage door open. It was the height of pollen season, and apparently when I did the spray paint for the body color, where I had the hood, uh, a whole bunch of pollen had settled into that nice wet paint. So instead of a painted surface, I had what looked like a stucco on the hood. So that had to be sanded down and uh, resprayed. So it's uh, butch, for lack of a better word. But, you know, I looked at it and I thought, well, you know, we're not dealing with a showroom car here. And even though I don't like to weather my kits or, or beat them up, you know, in terms of rust and all this, this type of detailing, I thought for something like this, you know, that, that would go because cars that wound up being modified as such for these these stock races they had probably been uh no pun intended they had been around the track a few times in terms of uh use and abuse so uh you know if, if things were not perfect oh th there you go so let's talk about assembly now we have our chassis with those outrageous tires and wheels on there and that's all looking pretty good for what it is underneath yeah again we don't have a whole lot of detail you see here this is where the final exhaust routing will attach that's why those are scraped and left plain and you know once the the tires and the wheels are on this this all looks you know just fine enough under here in terms of what will become the engine bay now, I mentioned earlier on, there's just this whole open gap here with a shaft that runs through for the front tires. And then I was considering cutting some sheet styrene to drop in there and cover that up. But, but, when I was into the assembly here, I got the engine in, uh, I ran into one problem where my shaft would not go through. It was hitting part of the engine, so... No big deal. Uh, just went in there with my uh, handy pin vise, which I actually wound up using quite a bit lately. Went through there, and that allowed me to hog out the holes where the shaft runs through the engine block, and then it slipped right through and no problem. But then I was looking at it, and I realized, you know, can't do the shaft without the engine in place. With the engine in place, it's kind of hard to get in there to put those plates in. So I thought, you know what? I'll use some shrink tubing, which you saw in the JPEG, and I cut a length of shrink tubing, which is black, and I dropped that in there, ran the shaft through that, and now instead of a metallic shaft, which, you know, paint would, could be knocked off or anything like that, it runs through a piece of shrink tubing, and it's just black in there, and you don't even know that shaft is going through. And then to cover it up a little bit better, I put the battery and this little fluid reservoir tank here in there, and that is it. And I think that looks pretty good. So, again, you know, you're not talking about precise detailing here, but hey, uh, you make of it what you can. And I thought for what is there with the kit to work with, you know, the, the effort it took just to make those little bits of difference, well worth it. And it really wasn't much effort at all. So, and also again, you know, the kit with these steel wheels, you know, it, it rolls nice and easy. 
which again, I, I think hints back at a, a different time, certainly a different uh, age group perhaps, as to who would be building these where, you know, there was a certain expectation that when the model was assembled, someone would be sitting there, you know, vroom vroom on a, a tabletop or whatever the case may be. So, uh, there you go. It is what it is. Now, on the body, uh, I just put in the firewall there, so that's done. I put in the little light stand window screen, and uh, this was uh, it's a little sloppy right now, but once the body is in there, I mean the interior tub is in there, it'll fit a little bit better, but uh, <laughs> in my uh, a, uh, lack of uh, direction, when I went to put it in, I was just thinking, oh, driver side to the right, but you know, that's actually the wrong side when you look underneath. So I had mounted it and then had to knock it out and put it where the driver actually sits in the United States as opposed to um, England and Australia and Japan and India and other parts of the world where they drive on the right side of the car rather than on the uh, US and most of Western Europe left side of the car. So there you go <laughs> once again now the interior tub you can see is done here i had some jpegs in there for doing the seat belts and i think once again that that adds a, a nice little detail in there rather than just painting the belts that were on there now i do have to go in and do some little touch-up painting here so if you see some bits of white that will be uh, addressed before the final melding of the kit components so there you go and the roll cage i had assembled outside of the you know i assembled it in the tub but i didn't glue it so i could take it back out do the final paint and then do the final assembly in there so that is pretty well set the gauges now they don't give you decals for the gauges but being the type of car this is there's just three tiny gauges that are kind of molded into that dashboard inset and this tachometer up here I just did the faces in black and on the dashboard you may be able to see just a quick touch up with some white you know dry brushed it in there and that was that now moving on we have our rear bumper with its crash guard on there we have the front bumper with its headlight covers in there and the grill that was black washed crash guard on there and this crazy looking <laughs> demolition derby plow on front so uh, that 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 looks pretty neat but getting to this point this is where um, I think a little bit of an advisory comes in now kit like this you gotta keep in mind that this this is probably a modification of what would have been a, a stock car kit you know as in terms of you know stock wheels stock tires as you would see the car on the road they then took the kit i would imagine and modified the contents to make it into this modified stocker who cares about any of that well the point is uh where the care comes in when you get to the claddings on the side the crash bars for the side, you know, there are no locators, there's no indication where anything goes, you will have to size that up and, you know, get it together uh, just by your own measuring and, and reckoning to, to get it to all line up. So, you know, for instance, on the bumper here, you know, there's absolutely no indication as to where the crash guard should sit on the bumper. I just picked the spot that, that centered it. You know, I hogged out two spots on the bumper so I could get a flush mounting spot for the crash guard. And there you go. So, glued it in. Um, the same will be true of these side guards. You see there's really nothing on the body to indicate where to attach them. So, that's just going to have to go on. I was going to start tinkering with that before putting the body on and you know putting all the components together but I'm actually going to wait because where 
I will cite the side bumpers, or where you can cite the side bumpers, will have a little bit to do with the uh, body cladding on the side, because that will have to sit a little bit lower to allow for that final exhaust to route through. And I don't want to have any conflicts as to location between the cladding and the bumper. You know, looking for something like this when it's done, if that is really kind of visible there or not, but something to wait for. Last uh, note here, the hood does come with hinges. As you can tell, I didn't put the hinges on. If you do the hinges, you'll have to put the hinges on the hood, set the hood in the body before you do the firewall because the firewall pinches the hinges to the body cow so it can open. Uh, what I am going to do instead is just make two little tabs out of uh, sheet styrene and glue them underneath the fenders here so that the hood can sit and it'll rest on this part of the firewall, those two tabs, and that'll be it. So when I want to take the hood off, there's a full view into the engine bay, uh, detailed as it is. You know, since I went ahead and did the spark plug wires there. Now, in terms of assembly, again, not a whole lot left to do. So the tub goes into the body, that all goes on to the chassis, and then front end, rear end, the air cleaner, the uh, front clip, and, and these bumpers here, and then decals. So that's all that's left. So I'm going to get to that, and maybe a few JPEGs in here, but otherwise, next stop will be the final build reveal. All right, so until then. Okay, I had mentioned next time would be final build reveal, <laughs> but I put the JPEGs in, but something I wanted to show that I meant to show in the last segment, and obviously I didn't, so, okay, we have our car, this is kind of important, now they show you in the instructions, you see there are two holes that they have in the chassis piece. And I can tell you from building it, those holes are already, you know, uh, bored out for you. Now, in the instructions, they showed a shaft going through the top axle hole, which effectively lowers, you know, drops the uh, fenders in relation to the tire. And you would think, well, you know, if I, if I want to have, you know, a forward tilt, uh, you know, a little more aggressive stance on the car, do that. Well, there is there is a problem there, because if you follow that, when you actually mate the chassis to the body, you will most likely have, well, you will, <laughs> have your tire butting into the uh, fender. So you would have to open this up a little bit, maybe more of an aggressive arch as you have in the rear. Uh, you know, not a big deal, but just something to keep in mind should you decide to go that route, uh, you'll, you'll have to keep that in mind. You know, I had test fitted that and, and had figured that out. I, I was more inclined to put it on the lower mounting point anyway, because for cars, you know, I, I like that, that gasser uh, style stance where there's a little lift to the front because it kind of looks like the car is already jumping off the line. Now, with that lower hole, the car actually sits just about level, but you do have space there so you don't have to worry about hogging out that fender well. 
And another thing, if I can get in real close, you may be able to see it. Because this fender is hogged out for the larger wheel, you can actually see the inner fender line of the chassis pan through the side of the body. So I'm just going to go in there and touch that up with a little flat back, flat black. Remember, flat black is the black hole of uh, details or the lack thereof. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go and finish up now. And also, since I'm here, you can see those are the ledges, the little shelf ledges I put in of the stocked styrene to hold the hood. And there you go. You know I like simple solutions. Well, that's about as simple as simple gets. So, there we go. And next time, final build. All right, until then. Okay, and here we go. Final build reveal for the 66 Chevy Modified Stocker from AMT. And there we go. All right. So, the kit is done, obviously, and I think it came out pretty well. And the reason I say that, because I know I usually say, I think it came out pretty well. <laughs> but um, the reason I say that is uh, I had talked through the video about some of the... Uh, let's call them deficiencies of the kit in terms of, you know, detail here or the way certain things were molded, you know, certainly with the front end of the chassis. I had talked about that. But, uh, you know, in the final analysis, once the kit is together, and this is a kind of a curious thing I seem to notice uh, more and more with these AMT kits, particularly the ones that come from these uh, much, much older uh toolings is that you know for all some of the little issues with it going together and maybe this isn't so precise and there's a gap here and this and that and and whatever uh you know once it's all done you get a nice looking model so uh you know just looking at this i i decided to go with this kit uh because i i had said you know the purple color and i was gonna you know like do this one for for uh my wife, but, you know, also, I, I love the stance for the car, you know, these, these crazy racing slicks on there, and the, the crash guards and stuff, and, you know, it's, it's just a, it's kind of a, a kooky looking machine, uh, but at the same time, it's, it's, a, I think, a pretty neat looking machine as well, um, you know, I'm not, too much of a fan in, in terms of model building for like 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 modern NASCAR type cars that you know that there is from an engineering and design point of view there's a lot to appreciate with those because they are very precise machines but there's something about the rough and tumble look of these uh you know sort of backwards racing or you know amateur lower league racing whatever it is i don't really know i'm not i'm not an expert on any of these uh racing circuits but you know that there's a, a certain uh grit to these that i i think has uh, a true appeal especially with these older uh body styles that you get from um you know the uh land yacht days of, of detroit so now uh with that said getting into some of the final uh, detailing on the kit. Uh, one thing I'd like to uh, point out, obviously, decal work. Now, uh, there were some endorsement decals with the model that came with it. I had showed the uh, decal sheet in the beginning. I did go and use some extra endorsement uh, decals from a set of Gopher uh, drag racing endorsement decals. And of course, I, I have all the details uh, down below uh, on the video description with the uh, part numbers from uh, Gopher. But uh, I added a few extra endorsement labels, um, some extra, some in lieu of the labels that were uh, provided with the kit. Uh, the stripes came with it. I did add the EA on there for uh, my wife's uh, first and middle name there, Eileen Ann. And as we come around to the back. I had said in the beginning I was going to do a little something 
to uh, personalize this one. So as it comes around, you'll see the writing on there. And this car was christened the Purple Eileen Machine. <laughs> so uh, I have to say with this one, you know, I got these uh, gopher drag racing decals, you know, the letters and numbers, as I was holding them upside down, good job, <laughs> uh, you know, to, to make that possible on the back of the car, and, uh, you know, it was a, a little bit of a work of patience, because each letter is its own decal, so if you go to do something like this, you will be cutting out each individual letter, and then mounting them on the surface and uh you know you got to make sure alignment and everything um you know it, it is all good there so but you know, nothing crazy difficult it just took a little bit of time like everything else with this stuff you put a little bit of time extra time in a little bit of extra effort and you can really start taking things to uh to another level so to speak so there it is and a uh, few other things I wanted to point out detail wise. Of course, you can see the seat belts in there. On the back here, and it's a little difficult to see at the angle eye of the camera, but with the letters, I added a, just a little bit of trash talk. The uh, rear license plate there. See you later. <laughs> Couldn't resist. So uh, that looks pretty neat. But a uh, finer detail thing I want to point out. As it comes around, if you notice on the side crash guards, they are hollowed out a bit. And I just did that with my uh, pin vise drill. Same with the exhaust pipe. Because those were all flush surfaces, which in real life they would not be. And I just went in there and tapped them out a little bit to give that semblance of the interior hollow. Uh, you know, I only went in there... I don't know, sixteenth um, of an inch or so. It's not like I, you know, I had to drill all the way through there. That's not necessary. And a little bit of paint and the natural recess adds the shadow you need to make it look like it's hollow. And you know, it's one of those little tricks. Um, it's like a, a five or ten minute job to do those those little bores and it makes a, a big difference in the final presentation when you get to look at it. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I always say you, you got to try to harmonize your levels of details because you don't want to do something too much thanks to something that's lacking because all you'll see is the contrast. And instead of making the good thing look better, the, the bad thing looks worse. <laughs> but uh, simple things like this, I think in the eye of the beholder, whether it be you as the person who built it or someone who's just taking a, a look at it, the kit on display, I think it, it shows a little bit something more for the presentation of the finished product than you would have if you had just left it flush. Um, you know, maybe I'm reading a little bit more into that than... Uh, most people would. Someone might just, you know, look at it at the shelf and go, oh, hey, look at it, it's a car. <laughs> but um, I think uh, those of us who go into this hobby are a little bit more of uh, detail discerning people. So uh, we would notice something like that. So, you know, like I said, something simple and you can go for that. Now I'm going to pop off the hood here if it will cooperate. So we can get a look into that engine bay. And this as well was something uh, I did talk about doing the wiring on the engine and adding the radiator hose. Uh, indeed, on this kit, there is no plastic part for the radiator hose. So, uh, you know, that something like that would, would really be uh, lacking for someone who knows even a little bit about what should be under a hood. And as it comes around, you can see a little bit of it there. Uh, I'll have some JPEGs after this, uh, after I'm done talking here. <laughs> so you can see a little bit more of it. Uh, but, you know, that's it. And while it's coming around, we also have the underbody. 
you know, I did a little detail work with the springs and the shocks for the rear suspension. Those uh, final exhaust pipe extensions uh, I did in the uh, bronze just to uh, give a little bit of a different metallic tone since there's the steel and the, the silver there. So a little bit something to accent that. And, uh, you know, there it is. There it is. It's a finished product. So, like I had said before, uh, this is a kit because it is not that complicated. If you wanted to, if you had a, a whole weekend to really dedicate to building, it's not unrealistic to look at this as a weekend build. Uh, and that's a pretty neat thing. So, uh, you know, I would recommend this kit. It's, uh, th there are a few, you know, advisories, let's say, about the, the all the issues I talked about with the, the details and the snap, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go over that again. But, um, you know, if you want a kit that uh, looks pretty good once it's all done and certainly affords you the opportunity to play with it a little bit, you know, personalizing it like I did, or, you know, you could do all sorts of different color schemes. You could, if, you, if you're one of the people who really likes to go into weathering and beating up your kits, I mean... This, this could scream, you know, death race type, road warrior, uh, you know, arena, smash em up type uh, vehicle. And, uh, you know, you put spikes on it or, you know, some crazy kind of thing like that. And uh, really have some, some work with your imagination on it. But uh, I wanted to build it as it was. And there it is. So I'll let it go around. And I will call it quits on this video. So please tune in for the next one. And as usual, uh, you know, do all that, that that crazy YouTube stuff. You know, if you find the video uh, of help, of useful, of interest, whatever the case may be, please do like, share, subscribe. You, you, you know the deal. So uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll be back with another build. Okay. Thank you.